Hey guys, and welcome back to part 11 of Let's Play Rune Factory 5. In the last part, we were introduced to a new villager, Scarlet, as well as have unlocked the new dungeon. Yeah, I think that cutscene was in relation to... Uh Fuka's little side story event I'm currently on, which is taking a while. Anyway, guys, I'll meet you at Studio Palmo. It's like Studio Palmo is pretty much our go-to shop throughout this game. Makes sense, given that um, Palmo and Riker are providing us with uh, very useful tools of the trade for us. So today we are going to pick up the uh, frying pan. Unfortunately, we're going to have to skip buying uh, some bread at the bakery, which is fine since we can always uh, get more later. Plus, uh, off camera, I'm going to be eating the stack of cooking bread that I still have in my fridge from the bean festival. Find everything you need and a few things you didn't. So, I found another uh, uh, rock farming spot for material stone uh, right near the uh, town gate entrance. So yeah, I just wanted to show that off. If you guys are looking for um, additional stone but don't want to leave town. Alright, so we are back at the inn. Um, so we are actually going to... Uh, Ask Murakumo if he wants no. to uh, come with us to do some dungeon crawling. This is, and of Take course, um, give him his daily dongo. So, um, yeah, if you guys can tell, um, I got a boss drop for Murakumo, no. which is from the Cerberus. So that sells for uh, seven hundred gold. It is a holiday, not like he has much to do anyway. Alright, awesome. We have a team of three. And uh, just wanted to show you guys off camera, I got the critical ring from Terry. Uh, basically, it just increases your chances of critical hits. So, I uh, don't know how often I will use this accessory, but uh, I will keep it. Seems useful. And I also got the uh, Stay Up Ring, uh, which it just prevents your character from yawning at uh, certain time periods during the night. And the Sun Pendant, which is the other accessory I was eyeing, which helps uh, boost uh, allies' attack by 33%. Very useful during uh, certain situations. Okay, um... Just going to uh, ship out some stuff. So I'm going to ship out all these crimson claws. A uh, good handful of them I got from Murakumo, and one of them I got from the defeating the Cerberus boss. Uh, keep the Fox Bell because I want to give that to Akurama. Ship a piece of fodder to add to the shipping list. I'm going to keep the sashimi because. That gives a uh, pretty good RP recovery. It's always uh, handy to t have some food in your rucksack just in case. And um, honestly, I'm considering going to be selling the uh, uh, stay up ring if I don't get much use out of it, since it does sell for a decent amount. And this lance. Um, considering shipping as well. Gotta put that iron away. Alright, I'll meet you guys at the lava caves. Okay, so now with a uh, full party, uh, we finally made it back to the dungeon. Uh, off camera, I was basically um, grinding up levels for my party members, um, refighting the previous bosses, as well as going through the uh, jungle rainforest area on the way here instead of just warping here so opening a treasure chest we got a spell called water laser which is um 
if you guys played uh, the other Rune Factory games, it just shoots a um, a spout of water in an enemy. Uh, it is a pretty good spell early game, has uh, amazing range, and it's a, it's a good spell if you want to have a magic build. Alright, so that room just contains some slimes, which we uh, defeated no problem. So, we're gonna head up here to this dead end, which is going to contain a treasure chest and some rocks. The treasure chest turned out to be a mimic. Uh, no, I don't want to talk to you, Simone. I want to pick up this. Uh, don't bother uh, skipping the mimics. Actually defeat them because they drop either broken hilts or broken boxes. So, yeah, those can come in handy. So, um, for this in-game day, at least, um, we're going to try to get to the uh, second floor of this dungeon, which is going to be the halfway point, because I'd rather get through this dungeon with um, having party members, just to make things a little bit easier. Since this dungeon has some... Um, you know, a fair share of uh, hazards that are associated with it. And I will, um, I will demonstrate to you guys once we encounter them. Okay, so yeah, um, so spouts of fire just pop out of the ground. Um, what you can do is you can either wait for the fire spouts to go out, or if you press the R button, Oh, yeah, that prompt that um, is above Murakumo's head, for example. Um, yeah, that's just initiating a team attack, but we're not going to do that for now. You, so, yeah, you can press the R button to uh, dash through the fire. So we got a fire crystal. Uh, very handy, we'll keep those. Uh, recovery potion and orange juice. Alright. So yeah, um, just to demonstrate, if you accidentally hit the fire, yeah, you take some damage from it. So looking at the map, um, we're gonna go down there. I'm gonna go up and then to the left a bit. Since we wanna explore uh, every possible room we can. Uh, these uh, Ignis monsters. Um, don't be too surprised if they give you a little bit of trouble because early on in the g in Rune Factory games, you don't have a lot of magical defense, so just be careful. All right, so we got some money and we got Steel Edge, which is a dual blade weapon. don't want to quite go to the uh, next floor, so we're going to go this way, take a detour. Some spider enemies, and the gate is right in the, in the, in the fire walls. Pretty troll move on that the developers put in, but eh. It's a taste of what we're going to be running into, I guess, as the game progresses. So yeah, um, another advantage to um, having magic spells is if you run into a room with a monster gate and it's around some hazards or a place you can't reach, yeah, that's where having uh, magic spells comes in handy. Okay, so this chest contains some seeds and an antidote potion. Just checking the map uh, frequently because uh, this place um, can be a little confusing at first. You can try to follow the mini map on the top right of the screen as a guideline, 
but in some cases it's just not that helpful. Okay, so Murakumo is basically saying that he needs a healing item. We'll give him a recovery potion and that'll you know, keep him happy for a bit. Alright, so we are almost done with uh, this floor. So we're just gonna uh, try to make a fast dash to the second floor before my party members uh, leave soon. And so we can unlock another uh, checkpoint. So next in game day when we come back, we don't have to uh, traverse all the way through to the first floor again. So got some fodder, uh, some grass, onigiri drop from that goblin. Just checking our inventory. And yeah, our inventory is almost full, so we'll just get to the second floor and be done. Alright, so here's the map layout for the second floor. Um, it's a little bit more straightforward than the first floor. Uh, still quite a few rooms to go through. Um, but let's see how far we can get through on this floor before our party members have to uh, leave for the day. So we're gonna go take the upper pathway first. So some blue insect enemies here. Uh, we have seen these guys before in the Whispering Woods, the white counterparts. Alright, in this next room here, we have some hornets and some fire flowers. Uh, take care of the hornets first, since they can have a chance to paralyze or poison you. Alright, we gotta level up. Awesome. Got some honey too. Okay, and all right, that's going to be as far as we can get in the lava caves today. So um, on the next in-game day, we should be able to finish this dungeon. Okay, yeah, we still have quite a bit to go. Uh, while I'm sticking around, I'm going to be doing some mining just to fill up some space in my inventory. It doesn't hurt to stock up on some more ores and gems. Uh, especially aquamarines. Can use these for um, crafting. Oh, my character just looks so goofy with that pumpkin headgear on her head. I'm wearing it because it gives plus 15 defense. Alright, I'll meet you guys back at the outpost. Alright, so we are back home. Um, we're going to pick up our frying pan. So, as you guys can see um, off camera, I did a little bit of furniture placement and... Uh, reorganizing. So, um, just want to show you guys, if you hold the ZL and the ZR buttons down, you can place your character like on a grid and place the furniture more accurately. Okay, so did some more grinding off screen. We're going to call it a day. Okay, so it looks like we have concluded um, uh, Fuqua's little side story event. So as you can see, um, when you complete a side story event and don't have any other events going on that's not story related, yeah, these little pink icon markers that appear on the map um, that, are, that correspond to each character will, yeah, uh, trigger their event. So, we are going to trigger Murakumo's next.
All right, so here's the thing. Um, if you if you want to take a specific character out to a dungeon with you, and this is what I did not like about Rune Factory 4 with the town system, is if a character is associated or is involved in a town event, they will not go um, adventuring with you. This is... So, um... We can still, for Murakumo here, for example, we can still talk to him and give him gifts, but because we're doing his side story event, um, yeah, if we ask him to go dungeon crawling, he's gonna say no. <laughs> which is fine by us. It's a little annoying, but eh. Alright, so at the general store, um, we are going to, uh, do some shopping here. Welcome. Since we have, um some more gold now from sh uh, from shipping all those uh, valuable monster drops okay so um, because I'm still working on um, Martin's harvest 5 radishes request um, I am holding off on completing the other requests that I have completed since I like to personally complete them what all at once so what we're going to do while we're here is we are going to stock up on some more um, uh, cooking ingredients. Thank you for your business. Like rice. Do come again. We'll come back the next time to do more seed shopping once we um yeah, you know, once our radishes come in and we complete more requests. So yeah, just to show you guys, um, we have unlocked the second floor of the lava caves. Okay, so in replacement of Murakumo, I've bought, brought over uh, Kurama to act as our tank. So we have uh, ventured a little bit into the second floor, but we have not gotten very far. So we should be able to um, get this dungeon finished. And also it doesn't hurt to refight these enemies for uh, right. any monster drops and also to uh, gain experience along the way. We've been in this room before, as usual, take care of the uh, hornets, then the flowers. So yeah, as you can see, um, the more time you spend with your party members, um, yeah, the more useful they'll be for you. Especially in terms of uh, survivability. Okay, so this room is just a bunch of Igne and the Shadow Panther. Wanna kill the Igni first, since uh, they do hurt quite a bit. Alright, so here... Alright, we're gonna have to dash through that firewall. Okay, so we wanna go uh, left first to get a treasure chest and of course bump into the fire like an idiot all right we got a magic staff uh a staff that um i already made and added to the shipping list so i will just keep that to give it to a uh, magic based uh character so here some more insects nice thing about the later Rune Factory games incorporating uh, allies is that they can really help you out with combat. Alright, got a chest here with cheap, cheap sandals. Um, uh, better shoes. I will not be equipping these. I will be selling them because... If I recall, they, make, they have your feet make a squeaking sound, which is just very annoying. Carapace. Some mushrooms, which I believe that Simone threw. We'll take them anyway. 
Okay, so we're gonna go down the next few rooms. Uh, we also want to go up a little bit. Alright, a treasure chest blocked by another wall of flame geysers. Some bronze and an aquamarine. Which we'll just leave. Because we can always mine for more aquamarine. Alright. Uh, more uh, Igni and Shadow Panthers. Of course that Ignis trolled me and made me go into the fire. Alright, we got a Panther Claw. Okay, so we are hurting a little bit. To drink a recovery potion. Oh boy. This room. A lot of Igni and uh, Fire Geysers. Uh, luckily, the gate um, is quite accessible. Okay, so going further to the left is going to lead to the second floor. We want to take a detour. Yeah, guys, don't be surprised if the most damage I've been taking from this dungeon is just running into the stupid fire. <sighs> okay, so this room here just has spiders, fire flowers, and hornets. Uh, more of the same enemies we've... Uh, Seen be even before entering the dungeon. Right, we got a skill up. Alright, last room to backtrack on. Of course, it's uh, another trap room, which is fine. Because once we defeat all these monsters, the rooms won't really lock again. Okay. Alright, and that just leads back to the uh, entrance from where we entered. Some panther claws, we'll take those. And we're also going to uh, heal up a little bit. Alright. Now we're going to make our way to the exit of this floor. And I believe after this floor is going to lead to the boss. Okay, so that's uh, orange, which means that the next room up ahead is a boss room. Um, so should heal up my allies real quick. All right, let's head on through. Of course, knowing it's a boss room, if you just yeah, take a look at the map, and also the save point being there. So, my party members are around the mid-20s. My character is level 26. So, we should be okay for this boss. Alright, so we're going to save. Um, I'm thinking that I should probably um, get my allies to at least full health because uh, this next boss coming up, um, not going to uh, spoil too much for you guys, but this boss can have a chance of inflicting uh, status ailments. Heal myself up. Time to eat. All right, let's go. Huh? Now then, let's see just how big this score is. Oh, 
do you like that? Don't move. As a ranger of seed, I'm not letting you steal another drop of rune energy. Do I look like I'll come quietly? All right, so this is the third boss, the uh, Basilisk. So yeah, basically this boss is like a, a supposed to be like a giant cobra of some sort, cobra mixed with a lizard. Now, uh, watch out! Um, this boss has a chance of inflicting um, uh, status ailments such as poison and paralysis, especially that attack where he uh, gets you with his mouth, but otherwise, if you corner him, he's a piece of cake. Don't move! This is just too rich. Things are moving faster than I expected, but hey, that's one dirty deed already taken care of. <laughs> She's fatigued, and there are some signs of memory loss. But she's mostly unharmed. With enough rest, she'll be right as rain. Thank goodness! I suppose... Yes!
was quite fitting uh, that Simone just happened to be there with us when, um, yeah, Scarlet got injured. Uh, don't know how much help Scarlet was for us at this situation, but, uh, eh. You know, Cecil, she's in the next room over. You can go visit her right now if you wanted to. Alright, so before we go and uh, speak to Livia, uh, we are going to do some upgrades. Um, we're going to go ahead and expand our storage box since it's only uh, 50 lumber. Let's get to work! Alright, now we have more space. And Simone just magically teleported right next to us. So the next uh, storage box upgrades uh, 100 lumber and 500 points, but we're not going to need that for a while. We also have uh, the option to upgrade more rune abilities, but we don't need that right now either. Well? Yes. Um... What was that? Y yes Yeah? Um... Uh... Mm hmm... No mistaking it. Yes! Alright! Hey now. Ahem. Thanks, but no. I won't talk to anybody but Seed's biggest muckety mucks. Give them my name, and they'll come running like a herd of buffalo. It's Oswald. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> yes. No. Alright guys, that is going to conclude this video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this part. Anyway, uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And thanks for watching!